Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and today we are back with another da -da. Da -da. Bang. Woo! So today we're back in the base market and we got new snacks. We have a plethora of snacks. This is gonna be the biggest show of my life. I don't even know how I'm gonna make these cup ramens. I'm already overwhelmed, but I'm excited because I don't think I've tried like 90% of this. With yeah. that being said, I want to start something, okay? I think that we should start a petition for Casetify to make children's helmets and bodysuits. Because, <laughs> okay, hear me out. The other day, Sophie was over and she is just like this fragile little thing. We had 10 full-grown adults standing over her, watching her to make sure she didn't hurt herself. And I couldn't help but think about how a Casetify phone case, but for a kid, would be amazing. But like me, maybe you don't have a kid and the most fragile thing that you use constantly is your phone. You need a case to five phone case. Their impact and ultra impact cases are not only made out of 65% recycled and plant-based materials, but they are drop test approved for 6.6 .6 foot drops for the impact cases and 9.8 foot drops for the ultra impact cases. I'm a super clumsy person and the fact that I do not break my phone every single day is thanks to Casetify. Their new impact and ultra impact cases are lined with Chi Tech 2.0 technology and you're like, what does that even mean? It's their impact absorbing material engineered with dual layer construction, which sounds complicated. It sounds mm. thick. But no, Casetify does not sacrifice style. The Ultra Impact case is Casetify's slimmest, most protective iPhone case at only 13 millimeters thin. On top of that, the cases are also wireless charging and 5G compatible and just look at all the cute designs to choose from. I mean, it's endless. You can choose from the curated prints, the collabs with big name brands, the collabs with small time artists, which by the way, our whole family has case to five phone cases and all of them look so different because we get them according to our style. You can even customize with your own favorite font, put your initials on your phone case, do a photo collage, whatever your heart desires. I have a few case to five phone cases and I love to alternate between them and I love the fact that if I get a new phone, Casetify has a zero waste mission so your old phone cases are recycled and transformed into brand new Casetify crush cases. Mm. Casetify will even give you a special discount for recycling your phone case. It doesn't even have to be a Casetify phone case. They just want to help you recycle. And I almost forgot one of my favorite parts their cases have Defensify. I know it sounds complicated, but it's like an antimicrobial coating that kills 99% of bacteria that lands on it. And the cases are also non-toxic and non-hazardous. Guess what's around the corner, Dan Dan? Casetify? Uh, Mother's Day. <laughs> Mother's Day is around the corner. But honestly, Casetify phone cases are amazing for anyone in your life as a gift because it's something that they're gonna love and use every single day. So make sure to go to casetify.com slash bis B-I-S-S, to save 15% off your order or use code 15BIS, that's casetify.com slash BIS, for 15% off your new favorite phone case. And thank you, Casetify, for sponsoring today's video. And let's... I'm no. overwhelmed to get into the food. I'm sitting up on my knees right now, which is why oh I look God. taller than Dandan because I'm so excited for all of this. I don't even know where to start except for I have to start with this. I saw this on TikTok. They call it turtle chips, but apparently it's the most delicious Korean churro snack that you can get in your life. It looks crunchy, it looks crispy. It's not as shiny as the picture, not as glossy, but. Man, yeah. let's, let's dig in, it's let's like go. It's like 50 layers of deliciousness. It's delicate, but it's airy, and there's so many layers of crunch. Oh. Can you show them the side profile of all the layers? It tastes, it tastes just like a, wait, what is that called? Churro. Churro, right, right. Yeah. It's like a chocolate churro. Mm. Oh my God. That's good. Okay. 10 out of 10. That I'm is. gonna drink this. Hmm? It's plum juice. I don't think you guys like plum juice. Um, you can take a zip though. Okay, he always says a zip, and I don't know what that means, but I'll take a zip. Okay, this tastes just like Whoa. Fanta. Ah. Just like Fanta. Is it Osox? I just wanna know why you have the taste of like a 50 year old Chinese You wanna grandpa. try it in there? I don't sure. understand. Um, should we start making the ramen? Mm -hmm. I ordered these because my fiance saw this. Uh, oh my I think... god. Is it good? That's good. Okay, are you excited for this? Wolf. So my fiance says we need to get these because they're at the Korean supermarket and we've been planning a trip to Korea in like quarantine. So this is a giant imitation crab stick that you throw into the they convenience just... store ramen. So I see people just throw these into a like instant ramen. And you just eat it with it. Oh, another fish so cake. Really? 
Yeah. I've never Another seen it. fish I've never cake. Seen let's do it. Let's make it. Can we okay. open the kimchi ramen? Yes. And let's then do we it. get this one. I'll get this one. What is this one? That's instant get... hot pot. Whoa. We're gonna do all that right now. Okay, maybe not that one. Yeah, but let's maybe do the ramen. we'll do ramen. We'll do the instant hot it's pot. It's kimchi and butter. Bruh. It's Bruh. gonna be the best. Jeez. You wanna know why I know it's gonna be the best? Because Andropa came over the other day and he had one of these and he said, this is the best ramen I've ever had. <laughs> and I was like, what? And that's when you know. Oh my god. Okay. Mickey Mouse lollipop. Wow. That's cool. Let me set up my little confessions iPad. Ooh, that's so good. Tastes like Describe Sprite. It. Sprite? You just sucked on that. Real Wait, you gotta. I mean, y'all kiss anyways. Here. <laughs> It's good, right? You want to try? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just nah. kidding. Do you really? <laughs> no. Of course not! So I got my little iPad over here. We're doing confessions while we oh make the God. ramen. Okay, here's what's going on. We're cutting into this crab stick. What is wow. that? I think it's okay. fish cake. Oh, that so looks good. So you just push it out? We'll cook oh, it first. Oh, oh, oh. That's crazy. Then we put in this freaking fish stick. Yeah, cover it all the way. Can I try this Prusak? This is what? the nuclear okay, chips. I've never had those. Yeah, I'm so excited about this. Wait, but are you excited to eat yeah. this? Yeah. It's gonna be so spicy, dude. Oh my God, it tastes so good. Wow. Oh my God, it smells just like Prusak. Wow. Mm. Wow. It's amazing. Should we get a confession get going? Oh, yeah. this is so good. It's so good. Okay, oh. it's kind of spicy. Though. This is my jam. Let me just try this cake and then we're getting. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's actually spicy. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Ooh, I don't know why. Uh, okay. I wonder if there's something inside. Do you guys want to see this? Oh, I can't. Oh. I can't eat that. Ooh. What? You want to try? It's like strawberry. Oh. Mm. Wow. Holy sh! That's so good. It's a Japanese strawberry cake. Please buy this. Oh my god. So good. Here, then, then you open this. I'm gonna use some scissors. Can you show them what it looks like? Okay. Wait. Mill friend. Come on. Are oh, you freaking kidding me? I wonder what this is. Should we get into the confessions while I open this milk tea? <laughs> yeah. It says. This is confession number one. This is the, oh, by the way, if you guys don't know, I read your confessions, anonymous confessions, of course. I'm gonna leave a little link to a Google Docs. It's all anonymous. Please make it as long as you need to, and we're gonna be reading them. Number one, this is the story of when I got into neck deep on having a crush on men who were at the time 63 and 47 years old. And mind you, I was literally not of age. Okay, I was 15 years old. Now to set the scene, it was a normal Tuesday on my economics class and we were talking about sovereignty as we all usually do. Just casual discussion sessions and we were divided into these three groups. I got in with the smart kids group and they were talking about Elon Musk. I, in fact, am the stupidest in econ and was kind of well known for it. I wasn't really interested and I didn't do any contributions to the group until my group mate showed me a picture of the guy and I didn't know who it was and I was intrigued. My immediate thought was, holy sh he's bussin'. And I asked, <laughs> who is that? It was Elon Bussin' Musk. <laughs> I got obsessed with him. And at the time I was having a crush. I was also having a crush on Mr. Vladimir Putin, cry emoji. Side note, I really like parental support and presents, whatever it is. Anyways, at the time my mom caught my father cheating on her and he has children with his mistress and he's even secretly married to the mistress, clown emoji. Oh, this is a lot. I'm sorry, this is a lot. So they argued every second of the day. I was very obsessed with Elon Musk and Putin. Like in today's <laughs> climate, I don't know girl, I don't know if you can be putting this out there. To the point I made an Instagram account dedicated to them and even went as far as creating a Wattpad account and I made fanfics about them adopting a kid. I actually used my name for the main character. Yes, I was that desperate. So of course, this is the most cringe pilot ever. I even badly photoshopped Elon Musk and Putin's pictures together. I feel like I'm being canceled. I just want to make it clear, I wasn't the one photoshopping. Hey, she's I, honest though. At least it's anonymous. Yeah, she's this is honest. a confession, yeah. to be fair. Yeah. I think these accounts are still there, but I haven't logged into them because I feel the shame, LMFAO. 
I never told a single soul about this, but I remember one time I wanted to name my future son Gertrude because that was the name of Elon's pig that he used to experiment Neuralink with. Neuralink? Wow. Oh, Biss, I almost forgot. I even begged my parents to let me study nuclear weaponry in hopes Putin might notice me someday. Clown what? emoji. What? All right. What? Let's not. <laughs> I was a wild child. Thanks for hearing this. I'm 18 now and I have no obsession for them anymore. Oh. Unless. What's Is that what she said? What's that? She did, unless. <laughs> <laughs> what? Here's an egg. Go save yourself. See, here's the problem with econ majors. That's the problem. I'm just kidding. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Dude, this is, wow. Get the fork out of here. All right, next one. I really hope that there's no um, dictators in this one. So number two, I was born in a typical Asian tiger family as a second child. But because my older sibling had an unknown birth defect that weakened his nerves, which made him struggle in physical performing tasks, I stood up as the oldest ever since I was a toddler. Good on you, bits. Like, that takes a lot of skill. My mom was a teacher and my dad was an engineer, so I knew very well that I need to be good at school and especially at math. So I did. I was always the top of my class to the point I even had the audacity to correct my teachers. But on the summer after my elementary graduation, my neighboring cousin me. And I kept it a secret because of my fear of the possible consequences. Like my dad would get angry and kill my cousin, which would put my dad in jail. And because of my previous achievements, I got into an elite high school that only admitted top performing students, but I already lost my confidence and motivation. All I did was sleep in class and I barely talked to anybody in school. Because I was isolated, I was also heavily bullied. I tried to find things that I like, like gaming and drawing and playing the piano, but my disappointed parents decided to prohibit me from doing them because they thought it was distracting me from my academics. But in reality, it was distracting me from depression. The only thing I enjoyed in school was math class, and it was the only thing that pushes me to go to school every day. So I knew very well that I would go into engineering. I told my parents that I wanted to be an engineer, but they were not happy about it. They wanted me to become a doctor or else they'd stop supporting me. So I went to college, I took pre-med bachelor's degree, which was nice because this career doesn't require you to talk a lot. With all the pressure, sadness, and pain, I've attempted to end my life three times during my college years. Fortunately, I was able to move out of the house, which made things easier for me mentally. I started trying to build my confidence in speaking to people, but because I started making friends pretty late, I still have severe anxiety when talking, and I was still alone most of the time. When I found your channel three years ago, Pistol, I would play your videos because it was like I have friends to hang out with while I eat. Through the stories you shared, I was able to make friends and hold conversations by telling the stories you tell to them as well. I would recommend food, I, I tried cooking the dishes you guys eat, and shared those food to people. It built my confidence extremely, and you taught me self-love, and you taught me to be confident. I'm still a work in progress, but I believe I'm in a better place now. I'm already on my third year of my doctorates in medicine, and I'm about to enter my internship. So thank you, Stephanie, Stephiance, Dan Dan. Or me too. And everyone else. You're a major reason why I'm still standing today. <laughs> I love you, and I'm so sorry for everything you went through. But you know what? I am so proud of you. Can I say that? I am so... And it wasn't even me. Like, my videos don't do anything I know you're like making it like your videos Stephanie like the stories you tell the food you eat that was all you I just post stupid videos so I'm so proud of you and I love you too and like I would want you to be my doctor you know what I mean fix me oh. <laughs> okay the kimchi butters are done we took a little break we've got the crab you stick show them the inside? which is intense we've got the cheese that's melted on top Oof. Do you see that? Let's try it. Okay, I'm a little nervous about this. Wow, that's cheesy. <laughs> Never had a ramen with butter, dude. 
Wow. Not good? It was delicious. Really? Oh my gosh. How is it? Oh my god. Mm. Oh my god. The crab stick is amazing. I can't wait to do this in Korea. Or in China. Very creamy. I think it's, I think it's because of the butter. Mm-hmm. So I'm gay, and I'm from a very religious country in Asia. I studied really hard, and I got a scholarship to study in Spain. There, I kind of decided to be a boy wild. I mean, to Westerners, it might seem normal or tamed, though, but FYI, I was, and I still am a virgin, though. Anyway, I was kind of obsessed with sex toys. Ha ha ha. They said I was kind of obsessed with sex toys. Ha ha ha. Okay, I tried a lot of kinky and weird toys. So a little by little, I got way in over my head. One day, my friend discovered my stash of sex toys in my room, and he was so shocked because I'm a very timid guy, and the toys, they were too kinky. Another shocking news was that the dildos that I had, some of it was too big, and that gave him quite a shock. In my defense, yes, the dildo is bigger compared to my private part, but I just thought that it was the normal size for Europeans. Turns out the dildo was even big for European standards. Oh, sheesh. <laughs> then that's big. Have you seen a European? I, I want to. <laughs> you want to see a European penis? How are you single? Cuz. Uh. Since then, every time he looked at me, he just blushed and pretended nothing happened. Something similar happened again, but it was at the airport in my country. When I finished my studies there, I returned to my country in Asia, but I also brought back all the toys that I bought there. So I didn't know that they were all gonna scan my big luggage bag before exiting the arrival gate. And I was so nervous. What happens if they ask me to open up my bag? Well, yeah, during the scanning, I saw the screen and it was obvious that there are a few dildos and a vibrator shaped object in my bag. <laughs> Somehow, the security guy, the, though it was a guy, and uh, he opened and inspected the bag. And when he opened the bag, he was so shocked, he just stood there silently. After an eternity looking at me, he picked one of the dildos up and suddenly <laughs> he accidentally pushed the button. <laughs> And the dildo starts vibrating. <laughs> In front of them? At the airport, right? That's so awkward, dude. <laughs> and like the worst part is I've seen it before and it's not like a wiggle wiggle. It's like a very aggressive like. And it, like if you put it on the table, it'll probably fly off the table. Really? Yeah, because it's like and it'll fall off. And then knows. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. It was the biggest dildo I had. <laughs> <laughs> how, how big was it? Does he know? He says it's it bigger isn't. than European size, so should we Google What's that? What's European size? Okay, don't Google it. What, how many inches do you think Asian size is? Okay, like, it's th obviously this isn't true. Yeah. Because that, like, that survey is just randomized. Uh huh. But on Google, it said it was like, the average was like 3.2? What? It's 4.5. Asians? Yeah. Okay, not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then, 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 I, I, okay. Then, all right, average European size in inches is flaccid, it's 3.6 inches, erect is 5.6, average European. Damn. <laughs> so if it's the bigger than European size, if a European guy is gonna sit there and be shocked at his dildos, I'm, listen, I'm gonna be conservative and give it a good like 12 inches, like a foot long dildo. Honey. And yes. I don't know why in my head I'm picturing the scene and it's pink with glitter. Okay, maybe it's a glass or one. Or purple. Yeah, but uh, is it veiny? I think that's important. Oh, you gotta yeah. add these details in, because yeah. I really need to be able to picture it. This, it was the biggest deal that I had. He was stunned. He tried to stop it by pushing the button again, but then it just vibrated harder. <laughs> and he looked at me and he just gave the vibrating dildo to me. <laughs> Everyone there saw me holding a freaking big vibrating dildo in my hand that day. <laughs> I don't know if I would ever be able to live this town. I'll probably never go to that airport again. Yeah, but I mean, think about all the people that just saw you. Oh probably... yeah, that's on my bag. Yeah, I think I, I would have abandoned the no, suitcase. You should have pretended like- I would abandon the suitcase. Like you didn't know it, it was there. Like, wait, what? What do you mean you don't know? That's your friend, your suitcase. Yeah, but also it has like five of them. Like how is someone implanting five dildos into your bag? Okay, I guess that's the newest mission. Next trip we go on, there's gonna be a dildo in Dan Dan's bag and he's not gonna know. Yeah. I saw a TikTok, someone slide a speaker in their dad's suitcase and then he controlled it, started moaning. 
<laughs> the dad was freaking out, like, what? Oh, that's, that's so good. Sweet. That's so good, right? That's no, so I, good. I see someone. Then I watch out your suitcase now. Yeah, Why? you better watch out. Don't do that. A yogurt jelly. So good. I was in the relationship with the man of my <gasps> dreams. Are you guys listening to this? The yeah. man of her dreams, okay? As much as we loved each other, we found out that I was infertile. And he started distancing himself from me. And we separated because the relationship was getting unhealthy. I don't blame him. I understand. Do you though? Because I don't. We had intercourse and we held each other for the last time. And not that long after the whole separation, I found out that I was pregnant. And I kept the baby. It's been 18 years and her name is beautiful name, and she has hazel eyes and the same nose and smile like her father. I found out that he never got into a relationship after the separation, and seven years later, he himself. My daughter and I go to his grave and talk to him, and I wish he knew that he had a daughter who loves him. She showed me her channel before she left for college. My confession is that my daughter thinks he died due to his health and he, when he took his own life. Wow. That got serious. But you know, I think this is one of those situations where like I feel like I'm sure moms feel a lot of guilt for lying to their daughter about something so big, but uh, what a you know, that's I can't like that's a lie I think I could forgive my mom easily for. I mean, maybe I might be a little bit like, "Oh my god, why didn't you tell me?" Like I didn't want my mom to f feel that burden by herself. Mm -hmm. But this is wow. Wow. If Dan Dan hears this, then I'm so freaking sorry. Why? LMAO. LMAO? That's the confession. It's confession number five. Oh. I'm gonna preface this by saying that I've been into Dan Dan for a long time, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. What? All right. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I was there for his YouTube channel. I never ever miss a stream. Oh, sheesh. Even for his 24 hour birthday stream, I watched it during work. Oh, sheesh. Damn. Wow. So, what's her name? What's her? I might know. <laughs> He's like, what's her number? What's her number? No, no, I might know. Her username. This is. I, no, she, it's anonymous. Uh, now you'll never know which one it is. I know yeah. all my which viewers' the... usernames. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Do you know that I'm watching? Listen, okay, I don't that... even watch all of his streams. You're better than me. Dang. So yeah, I really love Dan Dan a lot. Okay. More than we do, it seems. It'll make more sense as to why I did what I did. What did you do? When I was 20, I, de I decided to be spontaneous and take a crazy vacation. So I hopped on a plane to Seoul for a month long vacation. I had the time of my life. My first week there, I went clubbing with my friend from Busan who had come up to see me. And she met Dan Dan there? No yeah, way. I'm like, is this where no it's way. going? When were you in Korea? You were there not too long ago. I was, it's been five years, no? Oh, because it's, it's been, before quarantine? It's been five oh, it's been years now, yeah, 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 2017. So, so I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. That can be right. Okay. Yeah. So she said my first week there, she went clubbing. We went clubbing and at this club, I met this guy who was really into me. And I was bored and I decided to feed into his ego. He kind of looked like Dan Dan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? And I find Dan Dan very attractive. <laughs> Listen, okay, I, this feels illegal as his cousin. I think I know where this is leading. Did to. you submit this, Dan Dan? Yeah, Dan Dan, get no. out of here. <laughs> it's you typing. <laughs> 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 I find Dan Dan very attractive. Anyways, so we're dancing and hanging together and he invites me back to his apartment. I go back with him and we get down to doing the nasty. Best f I ever had. Sheesh. <laughs> I spent the night and when I woke up, he was laying next to me and we were talking. And he randomly goes, why did you keep calling me Dan Dan last night? <laughs> That's what I like. Huh? I was like, huh? What? Where did Dan Dan get brought up here? He then explained to me that while we were f***ing, I kept saying, Dan Dan. Ah! This oh! is, this is... I'm gonna throw up. Just imagine. Ew, what? Is what? Like, like... How does this make you feel? Um. You just ruined some poor dude's life in Korea. He will always remember this. W Willie? Yeah, he's probably your number one hater right now. Oh, he's probably man. the one. <laughs> hey, that's okay. <laughs> and so I profusely apologized. I didn't realize I was so drunk. Shit falls out of my mind that I called him the name of a streamer that I watched. It was so embarrassing, but he didn't mind. His little words were, that's fine. My name is Daniel, so you don't have to worry. What? That's so... Whoa! It's so freaking embarrassing. 
embarrassing, but I got over it. Two years later, he actually moved to LA to be with me, and we're going very strong. Wait, so they're da- they're dating right now? They're together now. Dang. Dan Dan, I'm so damn sorry. Dang, he took my girl. He took your girl. <laughs> what? And you know what's so sad? What? She be screaming your name, but you still single, and they're living well, a happy she, life. She gotta scream louder. Like I, I can't hear <laughs> it. <laughs> He's like, I'm on the other side of the country. <laughs> I'm coming, baby. Just gotta say my name. <laughs> okay, That's next wild, confession. I keep eating these. Get these away from me, and my mouth is yes, on fire. So Can I get the jellies? <sighs> wow. Have you had this? Yeah, it's really. It's I think so I, good. I would say this is my favorite. Mm-hmm. No, seriously. Actually, what? yeah, it is. And More then than the, the koalas? Yeah. Here, I'm gonna get you some plum this, juice. This is really good. In middle school, I got extremely close with my seventh grade science teacher. Bro, y'all need to stop fucking your teachers. I'm saying that with love, you know, because I care about you. I got extremely close with my seventh grade science teacher. He wasn't a pedophile at all. What a great. <laughs> what a great. <laughs> He, oh, okay. No, he actually wasn't. He was a wonderful man with four kids and a wife that he loved dearly. He told terrific stories, somehow making them pertain to science. And all of his students loved him more than anything in a PG student teacher way. I'm sorry for accusing you. I'm sorry. I know. I don't know why I did that. Heck? I'm so sorry. That was my fault. That was my dirty mind. That is a reflection of me and my thoughts and not yours, okay? I always stayed back for the last period of the day because our middle school had two shifts, early and late shift. So there were nine periods total. Some students had one through eight and others had two through nine. Bro, this is like the softest looking thing is, ever. It looks no. fake. Is that matcha? I don't know. It looks beautiful. Oh. Is it good? Not sweet enough. Could be sweeter. Mmm, I like that. Could be sweeter. Okay, so it tastes like bang. Just like bang. <laughs> like bang. Just like a regular bang. <laughs> it's just it's like bang. Like no flavor. No flavor, yeah, it's just white bread. It's just bang. With colors. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there's nine periods total. Some students had one through eight, and others had two through nine. We talked a lot, and I developed a great bond with him. During lunch breaks, I would always hang out with him and a couple of other students. He was like a supervisor for our very cringy and middle school conversations. Anyway, this is just all context for what an excellent teacher this man was. And I developed a crush on him. I freaking knew it! I knew it. You old teacher fucker. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Okay, sorry. I, um, yeah, this wasn't a crush. It was a middle school obsession. Like how people are obsessed with BTS and genuinely believe that they would marry Park Jimin. Are you telling me I'm not gonna marry him right now? And by Park Jimin? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're better. You're Chungu. <laughs> Who's your favorite? I really like Hobi. I love him. Why, He's my why, favorite. Why? Anytime I watch interviews, he just has like a really. I don't. Because when you see interviews of all of them, it's natural for your eyes to gravitate to one person. So I don't really necessarily have a bias per se, but I notice that in interviews, my eyes, like I'm watching him, because he has like funny mannerisms and mm-hmm. he'll like randomly bl- blurt things out. So I think he's funny. Um, what was I saying? Oh yes, this obsession became so unhealthy that I found his Instagram account and obsessed over his gym pictures. Ooh. One day, I was there during lunch break and he went to the teacher's lounge to pick up his lunch. It's getting spicy. What he forgot about was the fact that he had left his phone on the desk. Oh my gosh. Another thing he forgot about was that it was unlocked. Bit. What? I grabbed it like the fucking gremlin I was. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine you. Like, being a little creep. Wow, she's brave. Okay, I grabbed it like the fucking gremlin I was, and I started scrolling through the images and the albums, and I found something so perfect, so delicious. It was like a dream for a kid going through puberty whose hormones were going through whack. I found a secret album of this man's wife's news. That took a turn. And I could not stop scrolling. I genuinely mean it when I tell you how voluptuous and beautiful her <laughs> ass and boobs were. And yes, it's pretty weird seeing that from a third party perspective. But I will tell you this. It's safe to say that going through my seventh grade teacher's phone allowed me to come to terms with my sexuality. My teacher's crush's wife's naked body was my gay awakening. <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh, wow! Oh yeah! And then that yeah. photo just boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Yeah. I'm more amazed how like she had the guts to check your teacher's. Yeah, phone. that's the part that I'm amazed about. Like you might get in trouble. 
I guess she doesn't yeah. care. And the, I think I'm amazed at that and the fact that this teacher leaves it unlocked on his school desk and he doesn't put the photo album in like a locked app. <laughs> That's true. You know what I mean? It's just hanging out in his freaking iCloud. That's dangerous. The following week, I came out to this man and every meeting he would go to that pertained to LGBTQ plus advocacy, he would ask me questions. He even asked me how I was able to come to terms with my identity. So one day... Oh, I'll sell you up naked. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to make up the most random excuse, anything to cover up the fact that I drooled over his wife's nudes. <laughs> I've grown since then. I hope that um, I have because that memory still disgusts but intrigues me to this day. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I want to say that I found your YouTube channel when COVID-19 first hit and my mental health was at an all-time low and I even attempted to Your videos helped me fall asleep and they made me smile at dark times. I'm now in high school and my mental health has health heavily improved, partly because of your videos. I have been a loyal subscriber and I don't think there's a video of yours that I haven't seen. I try my best to keep up with your podcast though. I'm sure you know how high school in an, Amer in an Asian household is. Oh. I love you, Steph Fiance and Dead Dead. Really? Oh Please my keep God. up the incredible work in making the world a better place Thank one you. smile at a time. Bits, I love you. I just want to say, I don't know, this confession like... It's, you know, I'm supposed to be creeped out because you went through your teacher's phone, but it's kind of a cute story. <laughs> uh, in the end. In the end. It's good. Yeah, for everyone but that teacher. Yeah, but he, I mean, he I would think, never know though. Yeah. yeah, he would never know. And then we get an email. I'm the seventh grade <laughs> science teacher. This is pertinent to the story. My wife is voluptuous. This is <laughs> oh, pertinent to the story. <laughs> no. Next confession. Hi, bits. I have a weird and creepy family secret I'm gonna try to tell. I'm gonna try to tell it as best as I can from what I've heard. I used to have an uncle. He passed away when I was like two years old and everybody raved about this uncle. I would always hear family members calling him a saint, an angel, and all around a good person. He shared a room with my grandmother, which is his mom, right? But until he got sick and mind you, he's a grown man at that point. He decided he wanted to get an RV and live in it, so he parked it in the backyard. He lived in it for a few years until he died in the hospital due to neglected diabetes. And that was all I knew until I turned 18. One night, my mother and I were just hanging out talking. Like you'd have a sleepover with a friend and stay up all night talking. Mm -hmm. I would frequently do that with my mom because we both have insomnia. But this night was different. We shared deep, dark secrets. Which, side note, um, let me know what was that moment. There is a moment when you become of age and your parents sit you down and they tell you all the family secrets. Have you had that moment yet, Anna? No. Not yet? I, I hope not. You hope not? I just don't, I'd rather not know than know. So, um, really dark secrets though, like sexual assault, drug abuse experiences, etc. And then she mentioned my uncle and she warned me not to tell anyone about what she was about to say. They always do that. That's they, they always do say that. The way she spoke led me to believe he murdered someone. But this was weirder than just plain murder. She started off by telling me that one day, when she was a little girl, she walked into the kitchen where her, her father, uncle, and other family members were sitting at the table. She walked by him and he grabbed her by the face with both his hands. So the uncle grabbed her mom's face by her ha his hands, she's a little girl, and licked her cheek from the jaw to the temple. Just like from, from the here jaw? to here. To the temple? What the what heck? What the heck? And when my mom told me this, I said, no, you're lying. And I laughed. But she shook her head in silence. And I knew she was telling the truth. She goes on to tell me about his RV. When he died, they obviously needed to get rid of the trailer and no one wanted to go inside to clean it because it smelled so bad. So they sent my mom, who's still a child, by the way, into the RV to clean it herself. She said it smelled like death. And she still remembers the smell to this day. What she found made me question everything I've ever been told. My poor mother found hundreds of jars filled with semen, human feces, and urine. Oh! <sighs> and no one said a word about it. If you asked anyone, they would all laugh and call you crazy. Um. Thanks, Stephanie. Can't wait to see your video. My husband and I love watching you. <laughs> it's his own <laughs> urine, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think? Okay, I thought it was like collecting other people's urine and semen. Does that make it better or worse? Uh, worse? 
Why he's collecting it. Why is he his collecting it? Okay, I'm oh, trying to man. think. Right, like one or the other, I can make an excuse, right? If it's just the jar, and I'm envisioning it right now. If it's the, just the jar of urine, I'm like, oh, easy peasy. He lives in an RV. Maybe the toilet's clogged, right? If it's just the poop, I'm thinking, maybe a poop fetish? Maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe for yeah. Uh, fertilize. Yeah, fertilizer, compost. Mm. Exactly. And then you're like, the semen, you know, I've heard some crazy stories of women like filling up jars of semen and buying it and then rubbing it all over their face as a skincare, not for sexual purposes. Really? Which I think is a myth. Listen, I want to know who the (laughs) fork came out with that stupid story that semen is nature's skincare. I bet a dude came up with that (laughs) shit. Because it's a freaking dude. I mean, then wouldn't every guy just... Put it on their face. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> your semen's worth like, it. If it you fixes use it. acne and stuff. Yeah. I mean, sheesh. It's for the I vitamins. You can take a shot. You will use it in there? If it actually heals my acne, why not? I'll just put it on the. A- a- <laughs> <laughs> Confession number eight. It's titled Bad Sex, Panic Attacks, and 10 Year Age Gaps. Let's go. That's so aggressive. So I was desperate, horny, and a naive teenager with mild to severe paternal problems, aka daddy issues. I obviously craved male validation, and I was always on the hunt for some scandalous situation I could turn into some juicy story content. My friends knew that, my teachers knew that, and my parents probably did too. But little did they know, I would go on to lose my virginity to a guy that was 10 years older than me when I was 18. Not only was he much older than me, he was also the manager at the, tutor- at the tutoring institution I studied at. Side note, I am now happily in a long-term relationship with someone age appropriate and I am well aware everything I'm telling you in this story is yuck. It all began when I was 16 or 17. I had been attending the tut- tutoring institution for a few years when they decided to change management. I obviously paid no attention to structural changes at the business because what student would, but then in comes, let's call him Johnny, because his real name was also a stereotypical Western Asian name, like Daniel. I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) He was short, but height is almost never a concern when you're thirsty like a mother (laughs) What did matter though was that he was toned, well-spoken, well-dressed, mature, and spoke Vietnamese fluently. Why does the last one matter, you ask? Well, because I'm Vietnamese and I was dead ass imagining a future with him already. (laughs) Disgusting. So what did I proceed to do? Instead of leaving it at a cute little teenage crush, I come onto him hard. I straight up finesse my way into his Facebook DMs at 17 years old. Like, I dead ass can't even blame this man 100% because I was fucking throwing myself at him. Jesus, I would have slapped the shit out of myself if I could go back in time. The space time continue. <laughs> Where I can blame him though is for entertaining my dumb ass, thirty ass, thirsty ass antics. We went from awkward, and I mean awkward, conversations that highlighted the stark differences between the stages of our lives to straight up sending nudes on Snapchat almost every night. Wait, did he know her age? Yeah. Yeah. He works at the. He works at the right. Yeah. Damn. How old is he? Twenty. 20- 27. Like, can you, do you like, rem- remember when you were like 16, 17, like how naive you were? Like, yeah. I think, you know? Okay, yeah. see, this is the part that people are gonna cancel me for. Mm-hmm. I think I can have a somewhat like a big sister, little sister relationship with like a 17 year old girl, let's say. But I'm imagining like a romantic relationship with a 17 year old and yeah. I want to gag. I mean, that's the case. I mean, that's the case, but even 18, I want to gag. Sorry for breaking all the 18 year old boys' hearts out there, <laughs> I know. I was definitely the object of everybody's affection. Straight up sending nudes, almost every night. I thought I found love. What I actually found was A, male validation, B, an outlet for my horniness, and C, a man with minimal self control. So after months of talking online and pretending like nothing was going on every week I saw him at tutoring, we agreed to a friends with benefits arrangement. But in my head, that meant he was gonna love me one day. Man's refused to even add me on Facebook, let alone love me. Fucking dumb bitch. <laughs> that was her saying that about herself, not me saying that. That was, no, no, no. that was her, she said that. Even though we had that arrangement, the most I did was give him head in his car. Whoa, 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 whoa. On the side of some random street, like the dirty little naive hoe that I was. That was until I turned 18. Cause man's had morals or something, insert eye roll. Turns out he hadn't gone all the way with me at this point cause he was worried about me not being legal yet. Like bitch, as if that mattered anymore with all the 
you sent me. But anyways, a couple months after I turned 18, he booked a hotel room. Oh I want to throw God. up at the thought of this. I waited two hours in the city for him to finish work and then go to the hotel room just for, in hindsight, the most mediocre sex I've had in my life. It's always the predators. But how, how would she know? She knows it now that oh. it was mediocre. Oh. Listen, you will always know. Even if you don't know now, mm -hmm. you usually know then. Because you feel it and you're like, well, nothing happened for me. We went to the hotel room and I thought it was about to be the spiciest time ever. But he was more nervous than me. Mans was terrified the entire time that the condom wasn't going to stay or that I was somehow going to miraculously get pregnant, which I mean, fair. But geez, it was my first time and this 28-year-old man was shaking more than me. The night turned out fine, but at the time I was euphoric. We ended up going down on each other one time at the tutoring office before school holidays. Oh my god, you're making me burpy. The same place that I had been casually studying at a few weeks before. Then comes sex the second time round. I was almost 19 at the po this point and still stupid AF. I was at another hotel, which was hella awkward when the hotel clerk saw us at check-in and check-out within three hours. <laughs> ah. How many of these do you think a hotel worker have seen? So like many. Like checking in, many, two hours later, times. checking out. Too you're like, many times. You're like, hey, can we get extra cleaning for a room? <laughs> <laughs> extra towels. Um, Clorox. But what was different this time was that Johnny Boy had a full-blown panic attack after we had sex. He was that worried about the whole situation that he started freaking out in the hotel bed. I had no idea what to do. I tried to comfort him to no avail. We ended up getting dressed and sitting in the room for what felt like an eternity and then he couldn't even drop me off at my dinner reservation with a friend because I couldn't even drive yet. But surely I thought, that was an intimate situation. He must feel something for me. She still wanted him? <laughs> nope, wrong. Two months later, he got a girlfriend and ghosted me. Haven't seen him since. It's been three years. I don't know if you're over it. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. And it's okay. I don't think you're into him. I think sometimes, you know, people always say, oh, you're not over it. That means you still have feelings for him. No, 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 no. Sometimes Johnny boys be f***ing up too hard. And you just got this, this anger that just is there. I feel like the rounds get juicier and juicier. I feel like each one, I'm like, okay, there's going to be no confessions now. Like, there's going to be no juicy ones anymore. And here we are, episode four. There's gotta be a five. I'm addicted. <laughs> this is actually pretty fun. I'm addicted through living through you guys. It's so much more fun than Reddit because I feel like I know you. The way they type it too. Yeah. It's like so descriptive. So good. And it's always a teacher and... Yeah, I'm telling you guys, you guys are teacher f <laughs> Like, and that's fine. Maybe that's what, you know how like... I need a confession from those teachers. Yes. Oh. Okay, next up, we gotta have a teacher confessions. That would just be asking for the FBI to come, no? Yeah. 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 Oh, Maybe yeah. that's why we're not getting the teachers. I hope you guys enjoyed today's <laughs> video. Make sure to check out Case Defy because one thing I know is that these confessions have taught me we are a reckless bunch. We are a bunch with sometimes no standards, morals, or, you know, whereabouts. And that's fine. I'm with you guys. So get yourself a case to buy phone case, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.